Johns. Hello, everybody. My name is Jason Piercy, and this is Out of the Fog. I've been here, what, like five-ish years or something now? And this is the first time that I think I've ever done this. And I don't intend to do it a lot. But um, uh, we've been hanging out long enough now for me to talk about what I do for a living. So I'm in real estate, and I sell houses, I help people invest, and I help people make good long-term financial decisions. And today, I want to introduce you to a team of individuals that have been handpicked based on who they are as human beings uh, to assemble a group of salespeople, a team, uh, because it's hard to do everything by yourself when your body don't work the way that you want it to anymore. So on this episode, I'm gonna introduce you to the Ask Team. So stick with us. We're gonna be right back right after this. Welcome back to Out of the Fog. Okay, so you've heard enough about this, I know, but and you don't want me to be keep going on and on all the time with like, oh, I was in an accident, I almost died, all of that stuff. But it's important just to say that there was a moment when I was in the hospital when I wasn't sure just yet whether or not I'd be able to like even really walk at all, let alone be able to keep doing my job in real estate. And um, it took time to get my head around how to proceed with that. And then I sort of came to the realization that there are lots of people who have different uh, physical um, inabilities or disabilities and um, it doesn't prevent them from being good at the things that they do with their life. And I could do that too. And I just needed to focus on the things that I was able to do that perhaps separated me from other people in the real estate industry. And most of that exists somehow, believe it or not, between these two ears. <laughs> Most of it is in my head and a lot of it in my heart too. And I just needed help from people whose arms and legs work better than mine. Cue this crew. <laughs> the, this, the, this is the Ask Team, which um, is, is a name that we collectively kind of came up with and sort of voted on based on how we like being the answers that people have when it comes to real estate needs. So, uh, if I can remember all your names, I'll, I'll introduce everyone. So over in the back corner here, we have Mr. Stephen Coombs. How are you, sir? Good, thank you. Good, yeah, you seem really excited about being on television. Thrilled, <laughs> thrilled. thrilled. Very, yeah. very thrilled. Thanks for asking. Yeah, well listen, that's what we do. Uh, and also next to you, a handsome gentleman in the glasses, this is Mr. William Short. Uh, William's a very educated man, fashionista, <laughs> fashionista <laughs> very educated man, uh, very intelligent, um, has a master's in business administration, correct? Uh, on the far end of the couch, we have Christina Stone, this is Mr. <laughs> Mark Ivany. Hey Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing good. You're doing good, your beard looks fantastic. Thank you, sir. And then next to you, this is my, um, my the original, I guess would say, the first member of what became known later as the Ask Team. Right? Yeah. Yeah? So this is Miss Stephanie Roberts. Mm -hmm. Stephanie Ruth Roberts. Okay, so um, that's, uh, that's because that's what her name is on Facebook. Sorry. Um, so this is the entirety of the Ask team. So you're all realtors now. 
Um, but prior to working together on this team, none of you worked in the industry before. Yeah. And <clears throat> some people think that, or it might be counterintuitive, that if as a group we're gonna build a real estate team with the very clear intention of taking over the entire market. Because, like, is there anybody who, because if you're here for anything other than total dominance, <laughs> I think you should probably leave. I'm not wasting television time on people who don't want to win, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, it, some people think it would be counterintuitive that we would start from the ground up without previous experience in the industry. But I think this is exactly the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. Because none of you have bad habits. None of you have been told how to do stuff wrong by somebody else. <laughs> and you all come from individual places that collectively kind of make us an unstoppable force, mm -hmm. right? So now that I have that set up, now I get to talk to you individually about where you come from and how that makes us an unstoppable force. Cool? Yeah, yeah that works. Um, I want to start with Mark. Mm -hmm. Yeah? So prior to being in real estate, you've got a lot of sales experience. Yes. Yes. So can we talk a little bit about what you did prior to this? And because um, you're a big relationship guy and how those two sort of things like melt together. Yeah. So for uh, several years, I was, well, seven or eight, I guess I was into uh, business to business uh, sort of sales. Uh, basically, relationship building essentially is what it is. It's, uh, you know, you never really, I think I've said this many times, I've never really sold anything. It's, it was always about finding solutions for people and working with people and you know it just happens. Uh, previous to that I was also into management with people managing large numbers uh, up to 200 actually so you know you get used to dealing with different personalities and different people and it really kind of sets you up for uh, being able to deal with people on a, on a daily basis. I like that you mentioned the personality thing and I think that's kind of a good segue so I'm going to jump back to the back corner here and talk to Coombs for a bit because I think one of your strengths is the one-on-one -on -one communication with somebody based on, based on that personality and, and how you can, you've got a no-nonsense sort of approach to you, and I think people appreciate that, right? Like it's not, and it's not a gruffness, it's just like, well, this is what it is, bye. Yeah, it's blunt, right? I guess, I guess you can say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And like your your stick is, how do you say it? I want it done. I want it done now. I want it done perfect. <laughs> I want it done yesterday. <laughs> you know. And I and and of all of, of everybody here, who do you think messages me the most saying, "Is that thing? When's that? Do I have that thing? When's that thing? Do I have that?" Yeah, yeah. Definitely me. Instead, yeah. it's me. Yeah. yeah. And I I feel like. Because the personality profiles of, all, of, of different people, this is a part of what as a group makes us really powerful, is, um, look, Christina, for instance, you've, you've been an artist yes. for a long time, professional artist, yep. and you're uh, a mother and a wife, mm -hmm. a homemaker, mm -hmm. uh, and um, so let's jump to the front of the couch here. Um, Stephanie. Yeah. Um, we did little team interviews just to, to, to introduce everybody to, um, to our social media audience. And of course, you can see from the tags here that um, you can go look at some of these also. And I started it by saying, if you want something done, you give it to a busy person. Mm -hmm. So we, I mean, there's only so much time <laughs> left. So <laughs> give us an idea how you spend your time. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I am in my last year of medical school, graduating in June, so very excited about that. And then I also spend a lot of time developing different business ventures, so here in real estate, of course. Um, I think prior to medical school, I was a registered nurse, and so I have went down a lot of different pathways and have a lot of very diverse interests, I would say, and very happy to be here to be spending time with real estate and building a hopefully successful career in that with this team. Yeah, well, I think that the team, the team foregone conclusion is will be, always will be successful as long as it's what we want to do. It's just a matter of um, how much time you want to spend doing it versus <laughs> like inside people's bodies sewing stuff together. 
Um, so let's go behind here to Mr. William Short. Sir, you've been so patient. You're a very patient man. Yeah. I, I think so. <laughs> I think you're, you're calm, cool, collected, and that's a big part of some of the individual skill sets I think that you bring to the table. Um, one of my favorite things about how you look at a situation when, because we're all, I think we'll all agree, and Mark, we've talked about this a bunch of times, we're problem solvers. Mm -hmm. That's what we do, right? But the only way to solve a problem is you, if you can really identify what it is. So that's something I've found, William, that you've been particularly good at, like seeing the individual pieces and kind of rearranging them a bit. Is there a way that you can get that, that process out of your brain and into words a little bit so that people can understand the value there? Uh, I mean, the process, I don't know. Uh, I guess it stems from, you know, uh, experience like running a nonprofit for, for years and uh, working, uh, working with a volunteer organization. So being presented with a lot of problems and having the experience of breaking that down into ways to, uh, to solve it. And it's sort of the ideal time for us to take a quick break and uh, we will do that. And when we come back, uh, I think I'm going to get a little bit more personal with these people so that you can see who they are as human beings, not just people who are going to take your money and sell your houses. We'll be right back after this. And welcome back to Out of the Fog. Okay, so over that break, I found myself thinking that, like, I'm so happy and proud to be a part of this team with all these people. And I have so many things that I want the world to know about them, so I just kind of catch myself doing this. So now, it's time for me to stop doing that, and we're just going to do, like, some rapid-fire questions. Uh, so <coughs> let's, uh, let's start with you, Coombs. Thanks. Okay? Thanks for <laughs> starting with me. Listen, man, you run right into the trauma. Okay. That's what you do, right? Yes, yes. That's what we do. Yes. Okay. Um, what do you dislike about being a realtor? I don't know if I dislike anything, really. Really? Um, yeah. I, you know what? I'll take it. Christina. Same question? No, yeah. You, you get a you different question about being a realtor. <laughs> Uh, so I, I dislike the phone calls. I much rather have a face-to-face -face interaction where I can actually sit down and kind of really see what they want and, and, and talk to them on a different level. So do you mean when you call people or when people call you? When I call people. Gotcha. Yep. Because yep. it feels does it feels like intrusive or whatever? Well, yeah. It just it's not as <coughs> it's not as personable where I could sit down, you know, and, and have a coffee and kind of you know see who they are a, as a yeah. person and really get the feel of what th what they want. And yeah. I feel that I'm better equipped to, to meet all of their needs then. Okay. Instead yeah. of just you know saying whatever on the phone, anybody can kind of you know skim through a, a conversation and who knows what they have going on. Maybe they can't give you their full attention. And all right, uh, Will, your turn. Um, people say that this is an easy gig. Uh, is it easy to be a full-time realtor? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, why not? Uh, well, I mean, I had a little bit of a unique experience, I guess, I guess because uh, I met you like a week before you almost died. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> He says it so nonchalantly. <laughs> so so I, I was joining the industry expecting to have your guidance and everything along the way, and I didn't. Um, you know, everyone else at the company was great, but um, it, it still wasn't, you know, the same. So, you know, for me, it was it was a little bit interesting uh, that way. Uh, I mean, nothing I've never done before, because yeah. I'm used to working alone and things like that, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, like, the course doesn't teach you how to do the job, teach you how to not get sued. <laughs> um, you know, you got to figure it out for yourself, really, along the way, and you know, building that clientele, especially if you're in an area where you don't necessarily have a lot of family or, you know, uh, friends that are in a position to buy houses. Yeah. Stephanie, okay, um, I have always felt that this isn't a job that somebody can do part time. Okay, mm -hmm. you sort of do. Yeah. So um, tell me why that's not the problem I used to think it was. That's a really good question. 
So I think that it's possible based on like prioritization. So I think like in my particular, I guess, career in real estate, that I'm able to allocate time based on my schedule to meet the needs of my clients and also be able to be successful in real estate, I guess, as a part-time agent. So I think, I think it is possible. I mean, I do it, so I know it's possible. Um, but I think it's based on your own prioritization and um, how you can build your day and also ensure that you're meeting the needs of the people that you're serving. Um, and having that conversation with them initially, I find is very important and what their expectations are. And so if they want to be communicated with every day, then I ensure that I build time in my day to do that. If they are want to meet on a weekly basis, then I schedule that in. But I think having that conversation with your clients about what their expectations are and what their needs are throughout a process and either buying or selling or building a house, um, then you are able to meet their needs, even if you operate in a different schedule as well. Mark, your turn. Um, there's a lot of different types of clients that we can meet, okay? Different types of people and personalities and expectations like we were talking about. What's your favorite kind of client to work with? I really enjoy working with uh, you know, picky people, people who think that you know they can never, well, they, they never get what they want, basically. They always go through their life thinking they can never get what they want. And if you can actually go out and work with them. You know, there's some management of expectations as well, but if you can go out and actually help them get what they want, they're just blown away by it. And it's one of my favorite things to see people happy just with what they got. Christina, mm -hmm. who do you want to work with? Like what do you, what kind of, what kind of deals do you want to do? What fascinates you? Um, I absolutely love uh, Airbnbs, uh, vacation rentals, anything like that, like a, a sort of investment property um, where people can come in and uh, purchase a home with the intentions of building their own portfolio. I, uh, I really enjoy that. So to help people find them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But yeah. Is this something you want to do yourself? <laughs> Down the road, I would, well hopefully next year actually, uh, we're hoping to buy our first Airbnb downtown. And, uh, and maybe flip it. Mark, who, who do you want to work for? I just enjoy working with, with people who want to get to a goal. You know, they want to get that home that's close to, you know, the school that you wanted to go to. Or you want to get close to family. It's, it's, it's always these people who know what they, they want that way. It's really, it's really cool. You know, sometimes, you know, you hear the people that want to get close to family. I'm currently working on one now. And that's the reason why they're moving home. And it's a really cool feeling to know that you're helping them achieve that goal. Will, do you have a preferred clientele? Um, Not that you turn away others, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but... Well, well kind of on what uh, Christina and Mark just said, like, uh, I was working with a potential client last night um, who was looking for an investment property, and, like, wasn't specific on where it want, you know, where he wanted it to be, like, maybe Iceberg Alley, <laughs> maybe, uh, you know, Southern Shore. Um, so, you know, looking at different properties and kind of putting together a very quick idea of, uh, you know, return on investment and things like that. And, <laughs> I was actually thinking about it in the shower this morning. <laughs> I was like, that's exhilarating, like working with clients like that. And well, I mean, any, any client really um, uh, who, who's looking for something like the, the, the search process, I think, is, is generally exhilarating. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's in general is, is really interesting. Um, so you like to scour what's out there and show them little bits of it so they can make the decision that. Yeah, yeah. For them? yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, find, finding what's in the very tight inventory to, to work yeah. for that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I mean, you know, I guess in general, um, my my favorite client, I guess, is kind of um, you know interested in, in business and things because uh, that's kind of you know where my mind's at. Um, so, you know, maybe I'll dabble in commercial at some point. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you, Coombs? Anyone in particular you want to work with other than guys that play hockey with you? Well, no, uh, honestly, I'm just happy to deal with people that are not threatening my life or wanting to kill me. Yeah. If you, uh, okay. If so for you context, know. Coombs used to be a prison guard. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> just, just so that everybody, just so that everybody knows what's happening. Yeah. He, he was a correctional officer. Yes. So, okay. Just so yeah, so just, uh, you know, just nice people, <laughs> polite, you know, and just really enjoying that. Amazing. I, I, you um, know, it's kind of, uh, you feel normal again. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. fair, man. I yeah. get it. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Stephanie? I have to agree with Christina. I like people with big ideas and big goals. And I like that when people come to me and they say, 
I don't know if this is going to work, but I have this big idea that yeah. I want to kind of accomplish. And I relate to that, and I like to reassure them that, you know, we can work together to try to accomplish that goal or meet that big idea. And so I have a strong interest in investment uh, real estate as well and, and building um, Airbnb portfolios, as Christina was saying, and uh, personally and both professionally, I'm very so interested in that. I think that's kind of an excellent transition because um, this is very much a big idea that I have had, mm -hmm. right? And to have multiple people here who are ideas persons and who, who like to know what the end goal is and to help the problem solve to get there, um, uh, it fills me with a bunch of gratitude. And I'm really glad that it's the five of you and not some other group of five persons. Uh, <laughs> and I'm really glad that you took a moment to meet the Ask team and hear a little bit about them. We're going to take a quick break, and I'll be right back after this. I mean, I'm happy with them. I'm happy with them. They're all good human beings. And I think it's important to note here that you can teach somebody to be good at a job, a task, a thing. Um, so you hire people for their heart and teach them how to do the thing. Because if you hire somebody for their skill set and they just don't have the head and the heart and the humanity, it's a lot harder to teach somebody to be a good person than it is to teach them to be a good realtor, a good representation. So at the Ask Team, we're all about being good people, our heads and our hearts. Thank you for listening. Thank you for meeting us all. And we'll hear from you soon. Have a good night. I grew up in Nadi Bay, a little community six kilometers from here. I grew up here. In St. Lanier. We met in um, 65 and we got married in April of uh, 66. The first one we got married, we were married two years before electricity came here. Oh. We didn't have no fridges or anything then to put things in. We always bought our jam and we always put pear wax on top to keep it from spoiling. You know, that would keep from going bad on top. And that's how we did the bottling of that then, you know, until the church came here. Both of us worked on a fish plant. First when we got married, we used to fish, right? Money wasn't very plentiful. You know, we was, was only getting small pay at, at our work. See, that here you lived off the land. That's all we lived off the land. There wasn't, you didn't have any money because you didn't need it. See, there was no light bills, no phone bills, no car. See, that? you didn't need money. And we had all those stuff, you know, all of those uh, things preserved, right? When you come home from work and that, you know, Steve come home cooking a meal, which is days we didn't have time to do. We open up something, we probably open up a bottle of mousse or thing and put down the stove and add it up, make some gravy and boil a few potatoes and carrots and that and there you ate the meal for, for supper. It was really important for the you know, for us family, right? The beets and the carrot and stuff like that, right? That was my own guy. We used to set potatoes, we'd kill up from the beach and then when the cape on land we'd put it cape on top. That was the fertilizer we used that. Eh? We gave a lot of our stuff away to people who didn't have things. We would share our bottling and our veggies. 
say if someone came in unexpected and you was after finishing your, your lunch or whatever, we had hours to eat. Well, they came in, you open up a bottle of caribou or rabbit and, you know, whatever, right? Moose or whatever, whatever they, they desire. We just do it up and quick, quick meal, you know? We're going to start off by making some beets. We got five pound of beets. First we'll, uh, they got to be boiled uh, and we just go by the tenderness. And then when they're done enough, we'll throw them in the sink there and uh, we'll just run some cold water over them. And as soon as the cold water is up, as soon as they're cold to the touch, we'll just take our, with our finger and thumb and just peel the beets like that. Oh, and now sometimes if you don't cook them enough, they won't peel like that. And then I'll cut them up. Some people want some very fancy, but I don't do that. I just cut them up chunks. And after I get some cut up, I'll do the juices, I'll say. Where I does mine, I use two, two, and two. I use two vinegar, two sugar, and two water. That's cups. And I'll add allspice. That's what I put in mine, just allspice and salt. With the whole spice, two spoons, teaspoons, and I'll taste it. If that's not enough, I'll add more. Right on. And then when we get that done, I'll bring it to a boil, and then I'll um, put the beets back in the pot, and I'll just let them come up to a boil, right? And then we'll put them in the bottle, and they're sealed. If that's not sealed, you know, that's going to spoil. Oh, yeah. They or is yeah. yeah, make sure the bottle is sealed. Yeah, because yeah. when you're doing it like that, Every on the bottle, on the bottles when they're put in red hot like that, the bottle goes down. You know, the cover. Let, you know, it, go let it go down in the middle, right? Mm. And they all click, and you know that it's done. But if that don't happen, the bottle's not sealed. Might as well take them back. We always leave it right there for a while. We know the lid don't go down. We'll uh, we want you know we'll open it up right away. You know, see we we'll, we want we want to put it back. So I don't like bottle beats. I like my home. I like the ones that I do myself. Yeah. There's a lot of beats, so. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. Clubs, leagues, and courts in every province and territory across Canada, squash is the sport for wall-to-wall -wall fun, fitness, and friendship from coast to coast to coast. Learn to play, and you'll want to do it every day. Squash, play inside the box. the rooms finishing our second season of sharing our cultures. This is the place where you get to meet amazing individuals from diverse cultural backgrounds who are making significant contributions to our communities. Join us for sharing our cultures on Rogers TV Channel 9. Share in the joy and laughter with Spirit of Newfoundland as they celebrate 25 wonderful years. Join your favorite spirit performers as they toast a quarter century of fun, food, and fantastic music.